Hey everyone, I thought that uh, we would take a look at troubleshooting some USB problems. Since I normally record a lot of videos about the 7300, I thought I'd do a little playing on the radio this weekend. And when I brought up uh, FL Rig, it came up and these settings are not what's currently on my radio. And it doesn't seem to be talking to my radio. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out what's wrong here. So I've done a little bit of this already. I went into config and then I went to setup and transceiver. And if you look here at the transceiver, it says serial port none. Now, I don't know if a recent Windows update may have changed this or exactly what may have happened. This was working just fine. The rig is correct, the IC7300. And I'm going to show you quickly when I clicked the down arrow before, I had none and this COM4 was not even here as a choice. All I had was none. So let me go back and I'll show you what I did to correct that and then we'll come back here and we'll try setting the COM port and see if that fixes our problem. So with Windows 10 you need to go into Device Manager and you can do that by just clicking on the search bar in the bottom and if you start typing Device Manager that's usually the first thing that pops up. So I've got the device manager up. I'm going to go here to ports. And if we expand that, we've got COM4, which is the port that's showing up. And I did confirm by plugging and unplugging the USB cable from the rig that this is the port that's coming online when the rig is plugged in. So we'll take a look at this. Of course, it says it's working properly. I don't think I have ever seen Windows say the device is not working properly, but so be it. And then I went up here to Port Settings, and I actually just changed this back. This was set to 9600. I'm not really sure that was the problem. It may be that I just needed to come in here and do anything to the port, but I'm going to set it to 19.2 which matches the setting in FL Rig. So we're going to say, OK, we're going to go back. And that was all I did, and that made it show up over here. So now I'm going to select COM4. And let's just try clicking the init button and see if it will initialize. There we go. Now this, you can't see my rig because I don't have it on camera right now. This actually matches what's on the rig, and let me just show you. If I go over here and change the frequencies, now FL Rig seems to be talking to the radio once again. So let me close the setup screen, and I'm actually going to close FL Rig, and we're going to try running FL Digi. And we'll just run that app, which should bring up FL Rig automatically. And we'll see if it comes up and it works this time. There it's coming up. And still doesn't seem to be talking to the rig. And I wonder maybe I should have saved that. Yeah, see, we're still at none here for the... Ah. And now, I don't have the choice of anything other than none. Uh, this is the problem that I, was that I was receiving, that I was seeing before. The COM port does not seem to be showing up when I'm in FL Rig through FL Digi. So let me just take a look here and play with some settings in FL Digi and we'll see if there is anything in here that might be causing the problem. So this tells us to go do rig control. Enable FL Rig Transceiver Control with FL Digi as client. That should be enabled. Save. Close. Let's try closing all of this. 
Let's try this once more. You're getting to debug this in real time with me because I'm not sure what happened to either. This all worked perfectly when I had originally done the setup here. So, and that actually just dumped out an FL rig closed. All right, I'm going to go offline and do some troubleshooting, and I'll be back. All right, here's what I've learned. I did a number of attempts to set up FL Digi to control the rig through the FL Rig program. And according to the FL Digi manual in the configuration screen here under Rig Control, it actually, um, let's just look at the options here. There's FL Rig. There's RigCat, HamLib, XML, RPC, and then there's a separate one here if you're controlling the push-to-talk using one pin on a serial device, or if you're using GPIO pins. This is Pi-specific if you're doing stuff on a Raspberry Pi. So, according to the FL Digi manual, to use FL Rig as the rig control through FL Digi, Oddly enough, it tells you not to select this FL Rig option. It tells you to select this XML RPC program instead, or option instead. And then in FL Rig, there's a corresponding XML RPC control where the two programs talk to each other over an internal TCP IP link on your computer. I tried that. And then, actually, in the FL Rig manual, there's instructions to use this tab, where FL Rig is the server and FL Digi is the client. And I tried the options for that. Both of those options did not work for me. I tried configuring several different ways and playing around and could not get it to work. So I've unchecked all of those. And I went to Rig Cat, which is where FL Digi basically does the control of the rig itself internally using a serial port. So I'm using COM4, which was the one that we talked about at the beginning here. And I have the 7300 XML file here. I'm telling it to use the cat command for push to talk. Commands are echoed. That probably doesn't really matter one way or another and I had already initialized it so this is actually reflecting what's on let's see yep this is reflecting what's on the display on the rig and you can see I've got the frequency here is filled in based on where I am on the audio bandpass so if I click this lower signal down here you'll see the frequency up here had changed if I click on one of the upper ones. I'll wait for something to come back here. If I click here, you'll notice this frequency changes to reflect exactly the frequency I'm on. So this is all working fine. And I can actually control the rig by clicking the up or down, or you can type in here if you want as well. And you can see the frequencies are moving here as I'm doing this. Um, I don't have the rig audio patched through right now because that would just be annoying squeals. But it all works fine using the rig control directly in FL Digi. And that seems to be the best for me. The advantage of using the rig cat, uh, sorry, the uh, FL rig rig control is that the FL rig radio console is a little bit more comprehensive. It's got direct uh, sliders and buttons for power and filters and modes and it shows you both your A and B VFOs and it's a little bit more for uh, full featured but if you just want it to fill in the frequency and the modes for you on uh, on the program here the rig cat in here is fine. If I do get the other stuff working I'll let you know. 
One thing that I am going to try, as I was doing some research on this, I see that there are new versions of FL Digi and FL Rig and some of the other FL programs. Um, but these two came out on January 2020. As I'm recording this, it's March 2020. So I am going to download and install these updated versions and we'll see if maybe any of that got fixed in those so that it's better or at least easier to configure. So that's it. I hope this helps if any of you are having some trouble. There's a few things for you to check and a few things to try. This wasn't really a planned episode. I was having some trouble there and I thought I'd let you look in on some real-time troubleshooting. Before I started recording any video, the rig was definitely not communicating with the PC either through FL Digi or FL Rig until I went into Device Manager and went and found the COM port and changed a setting on it. I think maybe just touching it was all I needed to do to get the PC to recognize it again. At any rate, as you saw in the first segment, I kind of went full circle between the first and second segment, realizing that FL Digi was actually communicating with it. I would ultimately like to get FL Rig and FL Digi working together because the rig control is a little bit more full featured once you have that. I'm going to download that updated version and I'll make a segment here once that's up and working and let you know how that all turned out. If you have any comments, suggestions, or corrections, please leave a comment. I like to see those and see what your thoughts are. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please consider clicking on the like button. If you find the whole channel useful, I would appreciate you subscribing. You can either click on the icon that will pop up at the end on the lower right or click on the subscribe button on the channel page. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.